We're going to find out which class is the best class in Diablo 2. So if you're serious about Diablo 2, you know which character to make. Let's go. Druids have abilities that no other class has. The ability to shapeshift into a werewolf and into a werebear. Druids stay true to the archetype by using the forces of nature such as wind and fire, as well as calling upon wildlife such as spirit bears and spirit wolves and even vines and spirits to come to their aid. To determine how good druids are, we will look at three popular builds. Wind Druid, Fury Druid, and Rabies Druid. We'll look at leveling speed, end game competitiveness, gear dependence, and much more. With all that said, let's start with the Wind Druid. Now, the Wind Druid is also known as the Hurricane Druid or the Tornado Druid, but is a powerful magic finding build, which is based around the elemental skill tree. The main sources of damage with this build are cold and physical. And since this build relies on more than one damage type, it's able to avoid monster immunities and continue progressing with ease. In this build, Tornado is the main source of physical damage and Hurricane provides a large AOE cold damage ability. This build also utilizes 1.1 wonders such as Raven, Summon Grizzly, Summon Spirit Wolf, Arctic Blast, Summon Dire Wolf, and Oak Sage. Other than those, the build primarily maxes out Tornado, Hurricane, Twister, and Cyclone Armor. Cyclone Armor is a damage absorbability that actually only absorbs fire, cold, and lightning damage and receives synergies from the abilities we just listed previously. What's strong about this build is that it is a safe build with the cold damage, the cyclone armor, and summons all to help tank and absorb damage. The summons can also be quite powerful, and of course having more than one type of damage once again is very useful. Since cold damage is being utilized with Hurricane, an Infinity Mercenary can be helpful with this build or Insight for the Meditation Aura if you prefer Mana Regeneration more. The downsides of any type of build using Tornado is that it's hard to aim since it seems to just spin off in any random direction. The build also lacks mobility, so until you get Enigma, it's certainly on the slower side. And the best in slot items for this build are also very rare. This build is not one you'd want to jump right into right off the bat. Instead, you'd want to level with a Firestorm Elemental build and transition into this build once you get a higher level. Overall, this is one of the best Druid builds you can run and it falls a little bit below top tier. Druids aren't necessarily known for having the best build in this in the game, but if you're picking Druid, this will definitely be your top pick in terms of competitive builds. Next, let's talk about the Fury Druid build. I love shapeshifting builds. Now, this build is utilizing Werewolf and is known for being able to achieve some of the highest possible damage and life values in all of Diablo 2. This build, of course, uses Fury, which is its namesake, and Feral Rage. Now, Fury is your main source of physical damage, and Feral Rage will provide you with faster run walk life stolen per hit and plus damage and plus attack rating bonuses because of these bonuses the build will want you to keep feral rage stacks up as often as possible to keep those bonuses you'll also need to recast summons as needed such as heart of the wolverine oak sage and summon grizzly as needed this build tries to max out werewolf lycanthropy feral rage fury and heart of wolverine other than these shape-shifting skills the build also does get one Point wonders such as Oak Sage, which contributes to getting that massive life value, as well as Summon Spirit Wolf, Dire Wolf, and Grizzly. Now, the weaknesses of this build are that it needs increased attack speed or IAS on its weapon in order to maximize its damage per second or DPS. And because of these stat dependencies, the best in slot items for this build tend to be on the more rare side. However, the strengths of this build are that it's super tanky with that massive life pool, the strong summons and the build is great at single target damage which makes this build really excel in the end game to compare this build with other builds it actually kind of falls behind with the only physical damage at its disposal it can run into trouble with immunities it's gear dependent to really shine and even with a huge health pool this build doesn't run with a lot of defense it's considered a step below the wind druid in terms of overall uh, competitiveness but it's not the worst build in the game and you can definitely have a lot of fun with it now the last build we'll look at today for the druid is the rabies druid this build utilizes rabies as the primary ability what's different with this build is that instead of physical damage poison is actually the primary damage source and physical is the backup with feral rage with multiple sources of damage this build has more ability to get around immunes Rabies is actually a DOT, or damage over time, which is great for being able to handle multiple targets at once. 
give each one rabies and your DPS or damage per second can get really high. This build is also similar to the Fury build in that you can either use an Oak Sage for massive life pool or Heart of Wolverine if you're trying to maximize your physical damage. Overall though, this build also falls short because it requires very specific gear to work. The actual attack can even be interrupted, which can be annoying, and the build doesn't do a ton of damage compared to other builds from other classes. The build also only relies, only really does well in the end game. You wouldn't want to go this build any earlier than then. The pros, however, are that this build can be quite tanky. It's a more unique play style than other builds, and that can be a lot of fun. And of course, you get to enjoy the strong druid summons. To conclude, how good was the druid really? Well, druids are a class that the hardcore usually don't play first, or if they are played, it's more for fun. Druids don't have a reputation for being the most min-max class or top tier, but one that's more of a fun, unique playstyle that other classes just don't have access to. That's not to say a wind druid can't be competitive with the right gear and in the hands of a skilled player. A wind druid can be extremely effective. Also, druids are one of a kind. Transforming into animals? Druids only. Many people claim that playing a druid is the most fun that they've ever had on Diablo 2 ever. So if you're looking for fun over being the most overpowered and you love the class fantasy of being one with nature and shape-shifting into animals, Druid might just be for you. Now, Paladins are equipped with lots of abilities that make them great to play within a party. Defensive auras to support and keep their groups and themselves alive, such as Salvation, Cleansing Aura, and Meditation for Mana Regeneration. But they also have the incredible, powerful Holy Shield. Holy Shield is incredibly powerful, allowing Paladins to max out their block chance and and be able to fight in close quarters without having to worry about dying extremely fast. But besides being a great team player, Paladins are known for some of their very powerful builds, such as the Blessed Hammer slash Hammerdin build, Dream slash Tesladin, Smiter, and Zealot, as well as Fist of the Heavens Paladin. Each of these builds have pros and cons and are suited for different situations, and we'll discuss each one so you can decide for yourself how good the Paladin is. Now, Paladins have changed a lot over time in Diablo 2. Previous to patch 1.1, Paladins weren't considered top tier until synergies were introduced and they became extremely popular due to Hammerdin becoming not only viable, but one of the most powerful builds in the game. The Hammerdin primarily relies on Blessed Hammer, Blessed Aim for Synergy, Concentration as an Active Aura, Vigor for Synergy, and Holy Shield to actively increase survivability. This build is considered by many as top tier and one of the best builds a Paladin can run. This build is strong because it's very tanky and Blessed Hammer has almost no immunes since it doesn't do fire, lightning, frost, or poison. It's magic damage. This build can also do any content including ubers, declone, or whatever. So if you're looking for a build that can do it all, Hammerdin has you covered. However, this playstyle isn't for everyone. This build struggles in narrow areas where the circling hammers can't, well, circle. It can be boring slash tedious to spam the hammer ability a bunch just to clear one screen full of mobs. And the build isn't super beginner friendly. To be effective, you'll want certain gear and it isn't all easy to acquire. In addition, if you're accustomed to playing Sorceress, you'll find this playstyle a bit slow and clunky, especially without Enigma granting teleport. And even then, it's still a very slow teleport compared to the Sorceress teleport. But all of that said, it is a top tier build and you can't go wrong playing Hammerdin. Moving on to the Dream slash Tesladin build, now this is one of my personal favorites. This build relies on Holy Shock provided from the Dream Rune Word, hence the namesake, and puts points into skill synergies such as Resist Lightning and Salvation. Since Lightning is the main source of damage for this build, the Dream Paladin also runs Conviction, which lowers enemies' armor and resistances. And for the primary attack, it is Zeal, and its synergy sacrifice are also places to put skill points into with this build. Now this build is my favorite because the playstyle is super lazy. You can literally run around and stuff just dies around you by being too close to you. That's what Holy Shock, Holy Freeze, and Holy Fire do. AoE periodic damage. It's amazing. This build is great because it can farm anything. It's great to play, easy to master, and of course, you save your fingers some clicks. However, getting the gear for this is pretty hard. The Dream Rune Word isn't exactly easy to create, and you need to make two of them. And in addition to that, progression can be difficult before you have the two Dream Rune Words, and since there are a lot of lightning immunes in Hell Mode. Since it's a melee build, you also run the risk of getting surrounded and killed, and of course, 
course, you need high attack rating to make sure you can actually hit the monsters, so the build isn't perfect, but still one of my absolute favorites and I highly recommend, even though this build is not considered top tier compared to Hammerdin or Smiter Paladin. Next, let's talk about the Smiter Paladin, another build I like a lot. The Smite Paladin is very popular because it has been a staple build in Diablo for a very long time. It's ideal for farming ubers and is perfect for handling end game content. Smite cannot miss, so this build does not need to worry about attack rating, and it's also super tanky, which helps since Smite is a melee range ability. However, this build does have weaknesses like all the rest. You can't start off as a Smite Paladin, you'd want to level as some other build first, and the build doesn't have the greatest AoE. Smite is single target, but the build does run with Zeal for multi-target, but it's not a holy shock aura by any stretch of the imagination, so it kind of struggles with large groups of mobs. Like all builds, it also lacks mobility. Charge being the one-point wonder, which allows some improved mobility until Enigma. And another weakness is that it's only a single damage type, whereas Dream does lightning and physical, Smite just does physical damage. All of that said though, Smite is absolutely top tier and considered one of the absolute best builds you can go as a paladin. Next, let's talk about the Zealot, or the Zealer Paladin. Now, this build relies on Zeal and Fanaticism, an aura that increases damage and attack speed. Now, fun fact, it used to only increase attack speed, making the aura kind of funny, just rapidly attacking and doing absolutely nothing. The build also gets Sacrifice for Synergies with Zeal and Holy Shield for Survivability. This build is great because it's fun to attack very fast and shred everything in front of you. It can dominate the endgame Uber's bosses and can farm nearly anything. Like the Smiter, Zealot does only physical, so it can run into issues with immunes, and it is gear dependent. You'll want an indestructible weapon for sure, since you'll be attacking very, very fast, and you don't want to run back to town like a coffee addict runs to the bathroom. And like all melee builds, there is always risk involved with being melee. Overall, though, a very strong build. Many consider on tier with the Dream Paladin. Not necessarily the absolute best in the game, but still very powerful. Now, I do want to talk briefly about Fist of the Heavens Paladin. This is primarily a player versus player build. You absolutely would not want to use this for player versus monster or PVM. Fist of the Heavens, of course, is relying on Fist of the Heavens, the ability which is ranged. It does shoot down from the heavens and does a bunch of ability, a bunch of damage. This is actually considered one of the absolute best player versus player builds. So if you're looking for a class that can both do everything in player versus monster, as well as be extremely competitive in player versus player, many people consider Fist of the Heavens Paladin to be the best player versus player build, then Paladin pretty much has it covered. So if that is something you take into consideration for when it comes to what type of class you want to play, Paladin can do it all. So there you go. Overall, looking at the top builds and the play styles, many and myself included consider Paladin to be one of the best classes in Diablo 2, if not the best. With endgame content easily clearable and a smooth leveling experience, the Paladin has an enjoyable playstyle from beginning to end. If you're looking for a good time with Diablo 2, Paladin might just be your class. Now to determine how good sorcerers are, we're going to look at three popular builds. The Blizzard Sork, the Lightning Sork, and the Meteorb Sork. We'll look at how the sorceress compares in terms of leveling speed, magic finding builds, squishiness, and more compared to other classes. And at the end, we're going to decide how good good was the sorceress really now sorceresses are masters of lightning fire and frost the class itself stands out among all the rest with its incredible aoe abilities and utility abilities that no other class has in their skill trees such as telekinesis and teleport these two abilities make sorceresses the fastest characters to level with farm with and speed run with not only that they have multiple builds that are top tier and easy to get started with all of these combined makes the sorceress the top pick as a first character now the blizzard sorceress works well with cheap and easy to find gear, which is why you can stack a lot of magic find and still do well. This makes the Sork great for first characters, finding gear for other characters, or getting rich quick in Diablo 2. Now there are areas that don't have cold immunes that are great
great for magic find farming, basically things like Ancient Tunnels or Mephisto. Now, the build isn't perfect, though, and will run into issues against cold immunes, and it's also a squishy build, like many sorceress builds, so definitely be careful when teleporting. And when it comes to stat distribution, like many other builds, just get enough strength to wear your gear, and then put the rest into vitality. The build plays pretty straightforward. You teleport around, cast Blizzard, and then after Blizzard is cast, you switch over to Ice Blast or Glacial Spike for additional damage. Overall, Blizzard Sork is one of the best builds in the game, certainly one of the best for starting characters because of that low gear requirement we mentioned, and also Sorceress uh, also levels and just clears the game the fastest, so it's really fantastic. Now, moving on to another popular build is the Lightning Sork. Lightning damage has a huge damage range, which actually means it can do very little to a lot. So this is actually a good thing and a bad thing, and it's not that great because of how little damage is possible, so you can get really unlucky doing a bunch of little amounts of damage. However, this build is excellent at destroying bosses with static field and lightning. Like the other sorceress builds, this build is also super squishy, so you definitely need to be careful. Unlike Blizzsork, however, this build is not great for first builds because of the gear required to be effective. On top of all that, since it's only one type of damage, once again, immunes can also cause an issue, and there are a lot of lightning immunes in hell mode. Overall, though, Lightning Sork is a really great build because it's able to farm effectively, run bosses very, very well, and also has some of the highest maximum damage possible. Now, the last build we're going to look at for the Sorceress is the Meteor build. This is another popular build, which uses Frozen Orb and Meteor. Since both Fire and Cold are being used, this build can get around immunities better than, like, you know, Blizzsork or something like that. It's a great ladder starter build because it doesn't require specific gear, and for that same reason, it can also stack a lot of magic fine. Now, even though it doesn't require gear to get started, that doesn't mean that gear doesn't make this build much better. Now, the, the build actually has a lot of great options for the end game and can actually be a good option for fast-paced farming. Now, like all other Sork builds, you're going to be squishy, so you need to be careful if you're playing the Meteor build. And compared to Blizz Sork or Lightning Sork, this build actually falls a little behind in the later game, especially when you're playing with a game full of people. So, how good were Sorceress is really? Well, it's the best character to create first for ladder and it's great for trying to farm or get rich quick on Diablo 2. Sorceresses are speed running masters with no equal, with having teleport be a skill right off the bat and has some of the most powerful AoE abilities in the game. So in conclusion, if you're serious about ladder or getting lots of good items as fast as possible, Sorceress is your best bet. Necromancers have some of the coolest abilities in the game. The ability to summon the dead, use magical bones as weapons and armor, and cast immensely powerful, debilitating curses. These abilities make the Necromancer one of the strongest classes in Diablo 2, but the class does not come without its own set of weaknesses. In this video, we'll discuss the top four builds for Necromancers, Poison Nova, Summoner, Bone Spear, and Corpse Explosion. Each of these builds have pros and cons and are suited for different situations, and we'll discuss each one so you can decide for yourself how good the Necromancer is. Now, Necromancers have changed a lot over time in Diablo 2. Before patch 1.11, Necromancers could take advantage of the Marowak bug. Marowak were boots, which granted level 33 bone prison charges, among other stats, and the game mistakenly granted level 33 bone prison while equipped to a necromancer, giving massive synergy bonuses to bone spear, bone armor, and bone spirit, rendering necromancers the king of PvP until it was fixed in patch 1.11. Not to mention, in patch 1.11, it also fixed a bug where necromancers with Trag Ul's set equipped could sometimes become invincible to attack. Not broken at all. However, the Bone Spear Necromancer build is still considered a top build for Necromancers. The build utilizes the magic damage of Bone Spear, which does linear AoE with Corpse Explosion, doing fire and physical AoE, as well as strong defensive options with Bone Prison and Bone Shield. What's especially nice about this is the diversity of damage types, and many monsters in the game have no magic damage reduction, making Bone Spear very handy. The build itself has incredible survivability with the ability to take on lots of bone prisons. It's beginner friendly since it's not very complicated and three distinct damage types, fire, physical, and magic, making it a great build. However, the downsides is that there is a lot of ability spamming. You'll be making a bunch of prisons, cursing Amplify damage, then shooting a bunch of bone spears, and then using corpse explosion. That's a lot of abilities to clear just a room full of monsters. In addition to lots of ability spamming required, the build doesn't have great endgame potential, usually being used as a leveling build rather than an endgame build or for PvP purposes. And the cherry on top is that if you want to 
to realistically maximize your build, key pieces of gear for this build are hard to find. Overall though, Bone Spear Necromancer falls sort of middle, middle of the road. It's not the greatest build, but it's not the worst, and you can find plenty of success leveling with the build and pushing some endgame content. Like all Necromancer builds, it's not the fastest for leveling, but it is certainly quicker than the Summoner Necromancer build. Next, let's talk about the Poison Nova build. This build is amazing at AoE and is one of the best Necromancer builds you can go. This build uses Poison Nova as its primary ability, but also relies on Corpse Explosion, which gives this build poison, fire, and physical damage at its disposal, which makes this build powerful at getting around monster immunes. This build also benefits from having a Mercenary with Infinity, which will grant Conviction Aura, which lowers the defense and resistances of monsters around the Mercenary. On top of all that amplified damage will cause monsters to take 100% more damage, making this build even that much more powerful. Remember though, although players cannot die from poison damage and will be left with one life, monsters, mercenaries, and pets can all actually die from poison damage. This means that Poison Nova can clear monsters, after which Corpse Explosion can be used to finish off any survivors. This build puts points into Amplified Damage, Lower Resist, since it does a lot of poison and fire damage, also Bone Armor for survivability, Skeleton Mastery for synergies, Revive for strong summons, Golem Mastery to improve Iron Golem, which can bring an aura like Meditation for mana regeneration, and Summon Resist to help all of your summons stay alive in Hell Mode. And of course, the build relies on the key abilities of Poison Nova, Poison Explosion for synergies, Poison Dagger for synergies, and Corpse Explosion. The down the downside is that it can be hard to play since there are so many abilities to use, since it's also so AoE focused, it's not great at slaying bosses at all, and of course it's not a build you can run from the beginning. You'd need to respec into it. And last, it is definitely gear dependent in order to reach full potential. Overall though, this build is top tier because it has those three different types of damage, it can clear lots of monsters very quickly, and it is one of the absolute best necromancer builds, and also one of the best builds you can run in the entire game. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite necromancer builds, the Summoner Necromancer. As you might have guessed, this build relies on Raise Skeleton, Skeleton Mastery, Revive, and that great support skill, Summon Resist. Other than those key abilities, this build does also run with Iron Golem for the aura, Decrepify for slowing monsters, Dim Vision for crowd control, and Lower Resist for when it's time to burn monsters down with Corpse Explosion. This build is great because it has incredible survivability. The Necromancer can sit safely in the back lines while his minions clear away any threats. This build is also great because like the the other builds we discussed, it also has access to physical fire damage uh, with Corpse Explosion, allowing to get around certain immunities. And unlike the previous build, it can actually handle bosses quite nicely with minions and mercenaries all on the boss. However, this build also does not come without weaknesses. It is certainly gear dependent and is one of the slowest builds in the game because minions tend to go where they want and it takes some time to learn how to position yourself to get your minions where you want them. Once you get Enigma, you can telestomp or teleport right on your opponent and all your minions and your mercenary will be teleported with you right on top of where you teleported to and smack your target for massive damage. But Enigmas don't grow on trees, of course, so it does take some time to acquire that. This is a build I wouldn't recommend to level with because of how slow this build is. In fact, it is one of the slowest builds you can go for leveling in the entire game. So I'd recommend perhaps Bone Spear instead since it is much better suited for leveling. Last, let's talk about the Corpse Explosion Necromancer, or CE Necromancer. This build relies on Corpse Explosion's AoE to take out mobs en masse. Having a Mercenary with Conviction Aura helps this build a lot because of that fire damage from Corpse Explosion, as well as lower resist just being icing on the cake. This build also relies on Raised Skeleton and Skeleton Mastery, as well as some of the one-point wonders for Necromancers, including Bone Armor, Iron Golem, Revive, Raised Skeletal Mage, and Bone Prison, along with the prereqs for those skills. This build really shines because of the great survivability from the summons and bone defensive skills. Like the other builds we discussed, it has multiple sources of damage, and what's great is that it can clear most types of content. Even better, it's great at clearing high monster density areas like the secret cow level. The downsides are that like the other necro builds, it does require specific gear and higher than average amount of casting since you'll be using curses, summons, and corpse explosion to effectively play this style. When it comes to how good 
good this build is overall. It's definitely not top tier, but it's also not the worst build. It falls about middle of the road in terms of strength. Overall, Summon Necromancer and Poison Nova Necromancer are the two top builds for Necromancers, are considered some of the best builds in the entire game regardless of class. Other builds can be used for leveling, but eventually fall short. The Necromancer is not the fastest class to level, especially if playing Summon Necromancer first, but it can be okay in terms of speed if going Bone Spear build to level with first. If you're looking for a class with high survivability and some of the coolest looking spells in the game, Necromancer might be right for you. Up next is the Barbarian. Now in order to figure out how good the Barbarian is in Diablo 2, we're going to look at three popular builds. The Goldfind Barbarian, the Berserk Barbarian, and the Whirlwind Barbarian. I know my brother used to play Barbarian back in the day and he would clear through swaths of monsters with ease like they were butter but this was pre-patch 1.1 so let's see how they are how good they are in the modern reality of Diablo 2 resurrected so let's talk gold fine barb this build is literally used to generate gold for gambling how cool is that you go to Travancol farm the council members and use find item on corpses the build uses berserk for damage and leap to get around and also out of sticky situations what's cool about this build is how different it is you're really just stacking as much percent extra gold from monsters as possible this build is the best way to get gold in diablo 2 there is no comparison it also has high potential for other drops as well thanks to find item the build is uh, has plenty of weaknesses though you're squishy because of berserk decreasing defense rating and really you're just trying to max extra gold from monsters as your main stat there's not that many places you can go to farm with gold find uh, barb either since there are just certain places where you know like Tra travancle that are just best for gold drops not only that but the kill speed is not the fastest since when your mercenary kills monsters you your extra gold from monsters is combined with theirs so ideally you want to wait and let your merc get the final hit all of that combined and the gold find barb is still a top tier build because there is literally no other build that can generate as much gold as this build. You can actually find incredible items too from gambling such as bases for powerful rune weapons or best in slot uniques. Alright, let's move on and talk about the Berserk Barb, another top tier build that uses Berserk as its primary skill and is the best possible guild for farming super rare uniques, set items, and rares. The reason for this is because of, once again, find item, a barb only skill. This ability allows barbs to double dip, so to speak, on super unique or super unique or elite monsters by stacking tons of magic find and then slaying the monster and then using find item on their corpse. The build has great mobility thanks to leap and can use howl to send monsters scrambling away in fear, which allows the barb to isolate and slay the super unique or elite monsters easily. What's also an added bonus is that Berserk deals magic damage, making the Zerker Barb able to take down any elite. However, like the Gold Find Barb, there are certainly parts of the game they just can't do. The Zerker Barb is a pretty awful boss killer, and of course, this is not a build you'd want to run as a first character or right off the bat. The build is also really only for single target farming, so don't expect this build to run cows. It's really not meant for that. And on top of all that, it does require lots of gear in order to reach its full potential. Overall, though, this build is top tier because it's the best magic find builds off of elites and super uniques due to find item. All right, moving on. Let's talk about the Whirlwind Barb. This build is so much fun, being able to just spin through hordes of monsters with the Whirlwind ability. But not only is it fun, it's also super tanky, has lots of gear options, and it's pretty easy to play correctly. Whirlwind for AoE and Berserk for physical immunes. The Reaper's Toll on a Merc is also great for getting around physical immunes due to Decrepify, which is very handy since Whirlwind is physical damage. However, physical immunes are still harder to kill and can slow this build down a lot. Overall though, Whirlwind Barb isn't necessarily top tier, and typically if you're looking for a build that farms hell content, there are better options from Sork to Necro or even Amazon. They all have builds that are better at clearing monsters in mass. However, with the Barb's find, item, and leap, there are really no other characters better equipped for magic finding, super unique, and rare monsters, as well as the best character for, farm for gold farming in Diablo 2. While super niche, the Barbarian is second to none in these two areas. And if you're looking for a character to fill those roles, then Barb might be right for you. Moving on to the Assassin. Now, in order to figure out how good the Assassin is, we're going to look at the top two builds, the Lightning, Trapson, and the Kixon. First, let's look at the Lightning Traps. And this build relies on Lightning Sentry, which shoots Lightning, and Death Sentry, which shoots Lightning and uses Corpse Explosion. This build is really one of the most popular for Assassins because it has access to Lightning, Fire, and Physical Damage with the Lightning and Corpse Explosions. And on top of that, these traps can be placed and the Assassin can just move around to a safe distance from the monsters. The Lightning Sentry is used first, and 
once a few monsters have died, the death sentry can take it from there. Now, the advantages of this build is that it's very easy to survive because being ranged and using traps. Additionally, the skill Burst of Speed makes assassins very mobile and very safe and fun to play with. It's also not too complicated to play this type of build, which also adds to the fun. And there's also not too much gear that's absolutely necessary in order to make it work. Combine all that together and you can see why it's such a popular build. Of course, it's not without weaknesses because lightning immunes can cause trouble, and without corpse, uh, without corpses, death sentry can't use corpse explosions. So, getting a mercenary with infinity will be very, very helpful for the lightning traps in, in order to fully uh, be able to destroy all monsters, especially ones with lightning immunes. Now, you don't need to be careful, um, but you do need to be careful about getting the gear uh, on your traps in. For example, items like Griffin's Eye, which add to lightning skill damage and minus enemy lightning resistances, only apply to yourself. Uh, when you're dealing damage, but traps are not you, and so these bonuses are not being applied to your traps, so you have to be careful there. Overall, though, Trapsin is a top-tier build, one of the best in the game for clearing lots of monsters very easily. It's a little weaker at fighting bosses with starter gear, and of course, Infinity is definitely required if you want to get around Lightning Immunes, but with the right gear, this build is an absolute beast. Now let's talk about the Kixin. The Kixin is very different from the Trapsin in that it's a total boss slayer. The Kixin is most famous for being able to be an uber's dominator literally this build is created for downing those pandemonium bosses the build stacks lots of crushing blow which does a fraction of the remaining life total of the target so basically it's a percentage of their health per attack making short work of bosses with massive health pools the main skills being used are venom to add some dps in the form of poison damage and lightning talent or sorry and dragon talent as the primary damage dealing kick ability other skills like Fade to increase resistances and resist curses are amazing, along with Death Sentry for added AoE utility. Since Dragon Talon is single target, the Kixin is less capable uh, than the Lightning Traps in, at doing AoE damage. This build is really amazing for killing bosses very fast. It's also very tanky with Fade completely maxed out. However, the downside of this kind of build is that it needs really high attack rating, like many melee builds, because it's using a melee attack. It's also going to require that crushing blow, so there are gear requirements to make it work. Overall, though, this build is quite popular and very powerful. It might not be the most top-tier build out there, but with the right gear, this build is a solid choice for clearing bosses and ubers with ease. Now, overall, the Assassin is a very, very strong class. One of the fastest classes to level, and with Lightning, Traps, and being one of the best builds in the entire game, period, Assassin is a great first pick for a character and can also be a great ubers clearing class with the Kixin build. So if you're looking for a change from the Sork as a first character and that you're looking for a character that can still do it all very well, the Assassin might be for you. To figure out how good the Amazon is, we'll look at three popular Amazon builds. Lightning Javazon, Multi-Shot Boazon, and Poison Javazon. Now the Lightning Javazon, which is a portmanteau of Amazon and Javelin, if anyone's keeping track, utilizes Lightning Fury, which is amazing, which is an ability which changes your thrown Javelin into a bolt of lightning, which splits upon impact. You are literally Zeus throwing lightning bolts from on high. This is a great ability to clear large groups of monsters quickly. However, in Hell, there are tons and tons of lightning amused, immunes, so typically you want to have an infinity rune word on your mercenary, which grants plus 12 conviction aura, allowing the Javazon to get around lightning immunes. But overall, with how lightning fury works, this build is a top tier farming build because of how fast it can clear a room full of monsters. This build is also known for being the best build for killing bosses very, very quickly because of the single target ability charged strike, which adds lightning damage and physical damage combined. This ability is actually unrivaled in terms of single target damage, making this build the best in slot boss slayer. But not only is this build a terrific boss slayer, it is also very easy to learn since you're really just spamming lightning fury and charge strike on bosses. This build however does not come without weaknesses with its slow casts and lack of damage diversity only physical and lightning as well as repetitive play style the class could become boring to some and when it comes to gear if you want to see this build reach its full potential some of the best in slot items are incredibly rare Next, let's look at the multi-shot Boazon. This build relies mostly on physical damage and uses multiple shot to do massive damage and clear large amounts of monsters. It also uses guided arrow for single targets like bosses. Finally, the build also has access to magic arrow to do magic damage when running into physical immunes like ghosts in hell. Magic Arrow also doesn't use up arrows, so it helps with sustain. What makes this build fun is that it can clear entire screens very rapidly from ranged. It's fast paced by rapidly shooting masses of arrows and it also has great single target potential with guided arrow. 
Overall, though, this build is not top tier. It is very gear dependent in order to work well, and that gear is also not very common. On top of that, it doesn't have great mobility compared to other classes. Overall, this build falls short compared to the Lightning Javazon. Now, last, let's talk about the Poison Javazon. This build focuses mainly on poison damage, which is a damage over time, or dot, which makes this build especially good at farming cows. Now, the Moomoo farm is especially dense with Hell Bovine, and they are also very weak to poison damage. This build relies on Plague Javelin for huge AoE and Poison Javelin for linear AoE. This build can also run Jab for added physical damage. The build's advantages are that it is relatively safe. It is a relatively safe build thanks to being ranged and putting points into Valkyrie and Decoy to help distract and keep distance from monsters. And the build's biggest strength is that it's a great cow farming build. But that's where the strengths end. It's not great for many other farm locations because of Poison Immunes and Jab isn't a great AoE farming skill at all. In general, it's a slower build and a lower tier build. Overall, the Amazon is a top tier class due to its Lightning Javazon build, but aside from that build, there really aren't many other top tier options. Now, if you're serious about playing an Amazon at a high level, Lightning Javazon is your best bet.